welcome to part two of the project. In this one, I need to make some dart holders and a tow line, fit some cork to the inside of the cabinet, fit all of the hardware, and also figure out how to fit the dart board in a way so that it's rotatable. First up, I needed to make some simple dart holders and a tow line. The client wanted them to be simple and sleek, and they would need to fit on the inside of the cabinet. I wanted to use solid wood for these and as I didn't have any walnut I went looking through my offcut spin to see what I could find and I pulled out some sapili. First I needed to rip it to width and cut the pieces to length and I did some sanding to clean them up. And then I eased over the edges with my block plane. I didn't want a full round over here because I thought it'd look better if it matched the edges of the cabinet. Then I could measure the points of the darts with my calipers and I decided where I wanted the holes to be, marked them up and then drilled the holes at the pillar drill. I used a 2mm drill bit, slightly smaller than the points of the darts so that they would fit nice and snug. Next I wanted to try to match the colour of the sapili to the walnut as close as possible so I did some testing on a scrap piece. I applied some shellac and then compared it to the colour of the walnut and it needed to be darker and with more of a red tone so I applied some walnut stain over the shellac, wiped off the excess and compared it again and this time it was a little bit too dark. So I decided to add three coats of shellac to better seal the wood before adding the stain and I also diluted the stain down with some white spirit just so that the colour would be less intense and again I applied it and wiped away the excess and the finished colour was looking like a better match so I added a couple of top coats of spray varnish, denibbing in between each coat and here's how they ended up looking next to the walnut. Not a perfect match but considering these are two different types of wood it was about the best that I could do. Next I cut some more of the walnut MDF at the table saw then I edge banded it and applied the same finish as I had to the cabinet. This piece, to be honest, was a bit of an afterthought. It's not something I did on the original drawing, but it would serve two purposes. First, it would give the door a positive stop to close onto, and secondly, it would create a gap so that the cork and material that gets added later can be tucked in underneath for a clean finish. I decided to use epoxy to fix it in place because I wasn't sure if wood glue would adhere well enough to the shellac finish that I'd applied on the inside. I could then clamp it in place flush with the front of the side panels and I used an offcut of the 13mm MDF to check the spacing in the centre. To keep the cabinet closed I'm going to be fitting two things. First these brass latches which I bought on Etsy, these were easy to fit just with four screws. And then I drilled some holes on the inside where I could install some rare earth magnets. I did some careful measuring to make sure that the two magnets would align. I used epoxy to fix them in place and they were quite a tight fit so I used a clamp to help push them in place. To mount the cabinet onto the wall I'm going to be using these button fix fixings. Again this is something that the client specified for me to use. These fixings comprise of a button which is going to be secured onto the wall and a bracket which will be fitted to the back of the cabinet and they lock in place like so. The cost was about £11 for 10 of these and I'm going to be fitting three to the back of the cabinet. They can either be flush mounted to the back or recessed which is what the client wanted for added strength and also for less of a gap between the cabinet and the wall. I marked up where I wanted them and then went looking for some kind of template that I could print off and use to route out the recess but I struggled to find one in a format that I could open on my PC so rather than waste more time looking I thought I'd make my own template instead. First I took a rubbing of the bracket and then I stuck that to a scrap piece of plywood. I found a Forstner bit that matched the diameter and drilled out the holes. I could then offer it up to the marks that I'd made and I hot glued on a fence so that I could drill all of the holes at a consistent distance from the top panel of the cabinet. I could then clamp it in place and use it as a drilling template. Once the holes were established I could remove the jig and drill them out to the correct depth. 
Then I just needed to chisel away the edges a little bit and they fitted in place nicely, so I secured them in place with screws. I mentioned in part one of the project that I didn't really like the screws that were supplied with the hinges, so I ordered some nicer brass ones on eBay to replace the ones for both the hinges and the latches. The next job was to fit the dartboard plus the cork surround internally, and this was further complicated by the fact that the client asked me to fit the dartboard so that it would be rotatable. Apparently that's a common thing that dart players do with the dartboard so that the wear and tear from the darts hitting one area of the board can be spread out across the rest of the board. This required a bit of thought because the cabinet wasn't deep enough to accommodate the thickness of the cork and the dartboard, so that meant I needed to cut the cork to fit around it and also make sure that the screws securing the dartboard through the back panel of the cabinet would be evenly spaced out and symmetrical. So here's the best idea that I could come up with to achieve that. First I wanted to find the centre of the back panel and I did that by marking either side of the tape measure from corner to corner and then eyeballing the centre point. This didn't need to be perfect, it just needed to look centred by eye. I drilled through a scrap of wood on my pillar drill to give me a drilling guide and I could use that to drill a perfectly plumb hole through the centre. Then I needed to find the centre of the dartboard and fortunately that was already done for me as it came supplied with a centre hole. Next I could make a template for where the dartboard would be positioned using some cardboard. I cut it down to size so that it would fit inside snugly. The bottom edge didn't really matter as I was going to be referencing everything from the top edge so I just bent that over to fit inside. I then added a nail through the centre hole and placed the centre hole of the dartboard on top and then I drew around the dartboard. And then I used my knife to cut out the shape of the dartboard. This is the cork I'm going to be using. It's six millimetres thick and the biggest panels that I could find were only about 60 by 90 centimetres. So this is going to need to be done in sections. I clamped my cardboard template onto the cork, making sure that the edges were flush with my referencing edge and then I could cut out the shape for the dartboard. I could then butt the next piece of cork up next to it and do the same again. Perfect! Then I offered up the cork to the inside of the cabinet, making sure it was tucked underneath the top panel, and I could then measure up how much to remove from the bottom piece of cork. I cut that with a knife, and that seemed to fit pretty well. I'd need to use this off cut to fill the rest of the back panel. Then I just needed one small square to fill the last corner and I could cut that from the piece that was removed earlier. Next I made some marks to represent where each panel of cork was just to help me figure out where to apply the glue. And then I hoovered off any dust. The glue I'm going to be using is this spray contact adhesive and it needs to be applied to both surfaces that need to be bonded. I've said before in a previous video that I would never use contact adhesive again and I'm breaking that promise already but I must say that the spray stuff is much easier to work with. I used some pieces of wood to help stop the two glued surfaces touching so that I could position the cork correctly because once the two glued surfaces stick, I wouldn't be able to get them apart, so I had to be pretty careful here. I realised here that I wasn't going to be able to tuck in the top edge, because it already had glue on it. In hindsight, what I should have done is left an area at the top without any glue on it, and I could have just let the panel hold the top edge in place instead, but it was too late for that, so instead, I used a block of wood just to push it down onto the glue, and then I came back with a knife to trim off the excess, and that looked okay. It wasn't perfect, but it didn't really need to be because the client is going to be covering this entire back panel with fabric later on anyway. And then I could add the final bits, which were much easier because they were smaller and more manageable. You can see a bit of glue overspray here on the inside of the panels, but because the panels already had finish applied, it was pretty easy to rub off, fortunately. Next I could widen the centre hole using a 4mm bit, ready for the screw to be added. 
I positioned it so that the point of the screw was protruding just a little bit and then I could centre the dartboard onto it and secure it in place. I then needed to make a few refinements to the cork to make sure that the dartboard would fit right. Here at the table saw I'm cutting a square of MDF that I could use to make another drilling template. I marked up four corners and a centre point and I drilled the corner holes at 2mm and the centre hole at 8mm. I could use that 8mm hole to centre it to the centre screw on the cabinet and then I made sure that the template was square to the sides using my framing square. Then I could drill four holes to secure the dartboard in place. Next I could apply finish to the back panel and I hadn't got around to doing that until now because I'd been waiting for more shellac to be delivered. It got three coats, denibbed and a top coat of varnish too and finally because the client didn't want screw heads visible on the back panel he asked me to add some of these plastic removable screw caps. I got those from eBay. So this was a big job and it was one that I was doing on and off for three weeks. And that's because there was lots of toing and froing with the client, some design alterations, and there were materials and hardware and things that I couldn't order until certain decisions had been made. And then of course the waiting time for those things to arrive before I could start working on them. And all that was really challenging because it's such a large and heavy item, so while it was in the workshop I couldn't really work on anything else. And that's why you'll have seen throughout the video, sometimes I was working on it in the workshop, sometimes in the garden and sometimes in my dining room too because I had to kind of move it around depending on whatever else I was trying to work on at the time. And also the weather which at the moment never seems to be on my side. In the near future the client is going to be fitting some fabric over the cork and also some blackboards to keep scores and possibly some LED lights too. If I have any photos of that, they'll be on the screen now. If not, they will follow in future on my Instagram. I'm really pleased to have this one done now and I'm generally pleased with how it turned out too. Although there is one issue with the magnets on one side of the cabinet and it's quite a strange one. On one side, the magnets work really well. On the other side, they don't seem to stick at all and I really can't fathom out why that is. Other magnets stick to them just fine, but they won't stick to each other and they're definitely fitted the correct way around so it can't be a polarity issue. If anyone has any ideas why, please do let me know in the comments. Hopefully the client will be happy with it. The finish came out really nice. I do like shellac as a finish because it dries really quickly, it looks great and it has a nice subtle sheen to it too. The walnut MDF I used was okay to work with but there were some imperfections within the face veneers and for the price I paid for it I expected better to be honest. I know I'll get some questions about how much it costs, so for one full sheet of 19mm and one full sheet of 13mm, the price was £144. Not cheap. So that's it for this one. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also support the channel on Patreon if you'd like to get early access to my videos, exclusive content, a name credit at the end of my videos, and access to project plans and cut lists. Thank you for watching.